In this video, I will be covering how we create our identity based on studies performed by Turner and Tauschel on social identity, HMN Johnson on the self-esteem cycle, and Mike McClement who depicted the process an individual's confidence goes through. To do this research, I read three books called Brilliant Confidence by Mike McClement, Pedagogy of the Oppressed by Paula Freire, Experience and Education by John Dewey, and a website called Age of the Sage. Links and references are in the description bar if you wish to read them for yourself. Turner and Tajfell's social identity theory involves three main stages, self-categorization, identification and comparison. Through this process, a person can recognize who they are similar to and relate to them. For example, a group who are interested in a type of music like rock will associate with one another. Through the social comparison stage, they will recognize how they are different to others. Johnson's model of the self-esteem cycle involves four main stages. At the first stage of the self-esteem cycle, it begins with a person's perception of the activity and other per people's perception of them taking part in it. The second stage involves an assessment of their abilities to take on their role in the activity. Thirdly, the individual will perform their role in the activity and finally they can reflect on their performance to determine whether they were successful or not. The final stage is important because it impacts on their confidence levels to take part in the activity for next time. Our confidence levels can direct a person into an identity pathway. The confidence cycle consists of five main stages. The first stage in the confidence cycle is their initial confidence level. The second stage is an assessment of their abilities in a particular activity. This can range from positive and negative judgments. And the third stage is where they put their abilities to the test. The fourth stage is a reflection on their performance in the activity. Depending on their evaluation on their performance, this will impact on their confidence levels. Now when we put the social identity, self-esteem and confidence cycles together, we can create a clearer model of how an individual can develop their identity as a citizen in their community. The arrows in the model indicate the role model's opportunity to influence the person with their referent and expert powers. The role model can encourage a person to learn from their mistakes if they felt as if they didn't perform to a good standard in the activity. This way, a person would be able to learn from the activity and transfer this knowledge into the activity for next time. The last four stages are strictly down to the individual and how they reflect on their perception of the role model. This is why I think it is critical for every society to have reputable role models like Paolo Freire, Albertus Magnus, Canon Samuel Barnett, Stephen Hawking and of course many more. This way, people can create goals to push themselves to reach their full potential to do more for their society. By understanding how extremes are never practical to put in effect, we need to adopt strengths from both sides to create the balance. Here's a quote from John Dewey. Mankind likes to think in terms of extreme opposites. It is given to formulating its beliefs in either ors or betweens which it recognizes no intermediate possibilities. When forced to recognize that in extremes cannot be acted upon, it is inclined to hold that they are all right in theory, but when it comes to practical matters, circumstances compel us to compromise. 